Hey guys, this is Technoli, and today we've got this beautiful ASRock X570 Creator Motherboard. I got this from a channel subscriber. He sent it to me to hack it, and it's a beautiful board. Uh, Snappy Labs did a video on this early on when the Ryzen processor was able to be hackintoshed. But one thing they never checked or never tested was Thunderbolt. So, as you can see here, guys, I've got my Apollo Twin X plugged in here to the Thunderbolt port. And, yes, it is working. But let me tell you what you have to do. You need to update the BIOS to the latest version. Mine is version 2.70. You need to use the latest version of the, the UAD software. And I tested this with Catalina. And the version of Catalina on this is the latest version as of this video, which is 1015.6. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play this video right here and I'm going to crank up the volume for a second I don't want to get into any copyright laws but as you can see it's it's working okay so I've got it, the headphones plugged into the uh, Apollo and everything's working fine but I want to show you something I'm going to crank up the volume again this is what you're going to have to be very concerned about with this particular motherboard the Thunderbolt port is very sensitive, and I tried it with two different cables. So I'm going to crank it up. Now I'm going to move this cable. And right there, it disconnected the audio interface from the computer. So now I ha no longer have audio coming out. So what you have to do then is restart the computer. So I just wanted you to know that this is working, Thunderbolt does work on this with the latest BIOS version, with Catalina, the latest version, and with the latest UAD software, okay? Nice motherboard, has a lot of ports on it, and everything is working fine, and we're going to do some performance tests with this particular board, some benchmarks, and I'm gonna launch Logic Pro. So let's get started with that, okay? Okay guys, here we are. And we're gonna do typical benchmarks. We're gonna do Geekbench 5 and we're gonna do Cinebench. And before I get started, I just want to tell you guys that you have to turn off the computer to hook up your uh, Thunderbolt audio interface. Turn off your interface, turn off the computer, then turn on the interface, then start the computer for it to shake hands with your Thunderbolt device, okay? This is not hot plug. Um, it doesn't work, so you just got to turn on your device first, then turn on the computer, then it does the handshake through the Thunderbolt port, and you will get your Thunderbolt connected. Now, some other good news. We are able to use Wave Central on Catalina now. It is working. Whatever the bug was, they fixed it, and I was able to install. In fact, I can show you here. I'll just go ahead and install this. Click Install. And before, we got an error message right here, and it would not download or install. It wouldn't do anything. It would just stop and say, you need to call waves and uh, you know get a hold of tech support but it is working now so that's great news waves plugins working on Catalina in Ryzen so uh, really good stuff there now if you do an update let's say you do a supplemental um, operating system or Mac OS update you may have to uninstall the UAD software and then reinstall it and restart the computer for it to work. I had that problem. 
Um, everything was working fine. Then I updated the OS to 10.15.6, and I had to uninstall and reinstall the um, UAD software. Now, another strange thing that happened with this particular board, and I've had this happen before on other motherboards, and you can see here we have successfully installed. Um, sometimes, it's really weird, but sometimes the motherboard BIOS will go back to its default settings without you even going in the BIOS, and it happened on this computer with me. I didn't touch the BIOS. I didn't go near it. I was just restarting the computer, testing the Apollo twin, and all of a sudden the twin wasn't working. I went into the BIOS and had to reset all of my BIOS settings, which by the way, I'm going to show you the BIOS settings on this ASRock X570 Creator. So if for some reason your computer's acting weird or it's not booting up or you're just getting the Apple with no taskbar when you're booting, go into the BIOS and check your BIOS settings and make sure they didn't revert back to the defaults. And while we're talking about BIOS, let's go ahead and go into the BIOS, okay? So let's get out of here, waves, and we'll restart and get into the BIOS. All right, guys. Now, I did do, like I said in the beginning of the video, right here, I did the latest, as of this date, uh, 2.70, the BIOS for this one. So I would suggest updating the BIOS for sure, because there is something in here that if you don't update the BIOS, you won't get the Thunderbolt to work. And I'll show you what that is. But first, let's go to Tweaker. And right here, you want to load your XMP, your Profile 1, so it will recognize your speed of RAM, minus 3200. Okay, let's go to Advanced. CPU, There's you can leave it by default. There's nothing to change. Onboard Devices, we'll just leave it just like this, which is by default. Storage Configuration, AHCI, which it should default to that, no problem. Uh, nothing under ACPI, nothing under AMI graphic output, nothing under trusted computing, AMD, PBS. You definitely need to make sure down here, everything here is by default, but down here you want to make sure your Thunderbolt is enabled. And when you first boot up the computer, that is the standard settings, user authorization. You have to make sure this is set to no security, okay, for your Thunderbolt to work. All right, let's go out of here. Oh, overclocking, nothing to change. AMD CBS, nothing to change. Let's jump over to boot. Okay, we can skip all those other ones. Just make sure that fast boot is disabled and CSM is also disabled. This is another one that would keep coming back enabled when it goes back to default. So you gotta make sure that that's disabled. All right, then just save changes and exit. And let's get booted back in. Now this system is a dual boot. I've got Windows and Mac OS on this one for this customer. All right, we'll just go back, right back into Mac OS. All right, put in our password and here we go. So, Without further ado, I'm going to get out of here, and we're going to go ahead and click on Geekbench. All right, and let's just run Geekbench on this. Now, this is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900, 32 gigs of RAM, and let's run Geekbench on this and see how it does, and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, I wanted to mention that using the guide on the OpenCore website, just like in another video that I'll have in the description above for you to build your USB stick and then build the um, actual OpenCore file did work on this with no issues. Okay, so uh, I'll link that right up above and you can click on it to make your own EFI if you choose to or you can go to my website and purchase the EFI already built. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get. 
Oh, a nice respectable score. Now I'm using a Vega 56 graphics card that I had laying around. So just for comparison's sake, but we've got a 1308, which is a fabulous score and 10,830. So let's just check with other Mac computers and see where we're at. Yeah, we're above anything that Mac makes on the single score. Now on the multi-score, 10,000. So we're between right here, this iMac Pro late 2017, that's a Xeon processor, 14 core, and this other iMac Pro. So we're right in between these two. So awesome scores, just like I figured we would have. Now let's jump into Cinebench, okay? And let's go. Okay, guys, we're coming down toward the end of it here, and look at this thing fly. You know, these 3900s are just amazing. They never cease to amaze me. Let's see where we end up with this. Okay, 7289, which is a fabulous score. Here is a Ryzen Threadripper, a 1950X, 16 core, and we're well above that. So, 7289, compare that to what you guys come up with on your system. So, awesome score. Now, just for the heck of it, let's quick out of here and let's go into Logic Pro X. All right? Okay, now this is the Logic Pro X test that we always do and or at least that I always do this is a download you can get off the internet and what I've got it set up to right now is 50 tracks and let me show you what's going on here all right so let's go over to recording we've got 24 bit and I'm running right now at 48k all right and then we're at 64 I.O. buffers, all right? So 48 right here at 64 buffers, and I've got 50 tracks. Now, if you don't know already, these are synth, synthesizer uh, plugins right here on every channel, and there's five, you can see them right here, five plugins on every channel, just so you know. So these are MIDI tracks, and there's five plugins on every channel, and there's just a limiter on the stereo bus. Okay? All right, let's hit this and see what it does. Now, let me turn on the load meter so we can take a look at how much load we're putting on this. Look at all those threads. All right, let's go. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, 48K, 50 tracks, and look here, guys. Look here, like 30, 35% maybe. So nothing to it. The audio in my headphones is clear as a bell. No problem. All right. You know what? Let's just, we might as well jump all the way up to 128 tracks. All right. Let's go up to 128 and turn them all on. There we go. All right. And let's see what we come up with now. Now I will tell you that right Right about here, about the seventh bar, is where it does fail if it's going to fail. So let's go ahead and play back. All right. We are not an issue at all. We're just running at 75%. 128 MIDI tracks with five plugins on each track. 128 of them. And not an issue at all. Now, the CPU fan is spinning pretty good on this. So let me tell you guys, the CPU factory fans that come with these processors is junk. It's noisy. If you're a musician, you're not going to want to use it. Just go ahead and get a water cooler. You know, it's a, like 79 bucks for a, a decent two-fan water cooler, and it'll be dead quiet for you. All right, let's jump up. Let's go. Let's just bounce it all the way up to uh, 96. All right, so let's go over here. And uh, we'll change our sample rate to 96. There goes my relay on my Apollo. 
Okay, and we are still at 64 buffers, 96. Now, I know it's not going to do all of those tracks. Let's dump it down to 50. And let's do what we did on the 48. Let's see here. There's 50 tracks. All right. So we'll go back here and hit it. Okay, well, there we are at about 70, 75%, 50 tracks at 98 sample rate, or 96, and doing beautifully. So let's pump it up a little more. Let's see if we can grab some more tracks out of this. Let's go up to 70 tracks. Is that enough for you guys? 70 tracks at 96? Okay, we're hitting it pretty good there. We're probably at about 90%. And uh, let's see, we want to get past the seventh bar. All right, we're good. All right, let's 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 just go crazy. Let's go up another 10 tracks. There's 80 tracks. That would be a decent sized project, wouldn't it? Ooh, we're pegged out, but it is not failing. Let's get past the seventh bar. All right, we made it. That's 80 tracks. Let's see where the failure is. Let's go up to 85. Back it up and hit it. 85. We just got to get past the seventh bar. Let's see if we're going to make it. Come on, come on, come on. 85 tracks. Yep, we squeezed that out. All right. Let's just jump it up to 90. No way, 90. Okay, let's see here. Got to get past the seventh bar. Amazing processor. Okay, there's the load. All right, let's take a couple off. Let's see here. Let's take off these two. So let's see 88. If we can get past the seventh bar at 88 tracks. Nothing is bounced. 88 MIDI tracks. There we go. 88 tracks. I think all of you guys would agree that that was, should not be an issue. That would be enough tracks for just about anybody. And of course, if you run it at 40, 48 kilohertz, you've got as many tracks as you want. So there you go, guys. Hope that helps you with your decision making. So Moral of the story is here, we have got a great system here running Catalina, the latest version, using the latest version of Waves, and um, we've got our UAD, we've got everything working on this thing, great, very stable. I would say these ASRock motherboards are really amazing for the musicians out there because we're able to get these Thunderbolts to work. And um, really exciting stuff, guys. So I hope that helps you with making the decision on whether you're going to go with Ryzen or Intel. It's getting much better now for the Ryzen, a lot cheaper, a lot more performance. And so uh, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. You know, it used to be I was really afraid of uh, Ryzen systems, but... Uh, not so much anymore. I don't think I am afraid of them for uh, music production. So there we go. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, hit a like. If you don't like it, hit a I don't like. And thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next one.